Susan? Yes, I would like to call the meeting to order and the uh, welcome you all. Um, it's great to see you. And we didn't have to trudge through the snow to get here, so how great. I'm going to begin with a public comment. Um, Jeanette and I have already uh, discussed it. I got a nice um, text from Kath this afternoon, and I wanted to read you uh, what she had to say, okay? So I'm going to try not to hold my head down because then you can't hear me. I'll hold my paper up. Uh, the Human Services Department has done a fantastic, wonderful, and amazing job taking care of our most vulnerable residents and all the rest of us. I cannot thank everyone enough. Please pass along my love and deepest gratitude to all. All my best. Okay, so um, again, wonderful, wonderful message here. And um, I know that the entire human services thanks you all, the staff, for all their hard work. Okay, so that is our public comment. Um, moving down the agenda, we have liaison reports. Uh, Dwight is not here tonight. So we will not be getting a board of selection. However, we have Ellen. And Ellen, could you give us the Board of Finance um, liaison report? So I have a very brief report. We've continued to hear from the various boards and commissions in joint meetings with the Board of Selectmen um, in order to prepare the proposed budget for the next fiscal year. Um, it's really been uh, more of a listen, listening sessions, an opportunity to ask questions. We've been meeting twice a week. Um, we're scheduled to meet again tomorrow. And again, I don't have really a report on, on where it's going. I will say that my impression is that overall boards and commissions like human services have been very mindful and respectful of the uh, needs and concerns of residents and have come in with very uh, very well thought out budgets. So I, I can't really tell you where it's going because there's been no discussion of that yet. Are there any questions for Ellen? Okay, thank you very much, Ellen, for that report. And um, next item on our agenda is the minutes of the January 4th meeting. Um, I'd like to take a moment to again, thank Viviana for outstanding minutes. They're really fabulous. Um, I didn't see any corrections, if anybody has any. I just, I have a few. Um, and uh, let's see, in the programming section, youth services, uh, there, we actually submitted four requests for um, for uh, Shop with a Cop, and we were awarded three of those four and at $100 each. And um, as far as students gathering together for the um, for the gratitude baskets, they're they're not actually they're they're forming teams is what they're doing. So they'll probably meet virtually and then um, you know just bring their items. To, I don't know how you want to word that, but they're not really getting together so much as they're just they're forming teams so that forming teams person. virtually. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. And then they'll drop everything to someone's house. And the other thing was just the spelling of Artie Dixon for the donation of toys. It's A-R-T-I and then D-I-X-S-O-N. Okay. And the Bodak, um, the grant for last year had not been spent yet. So, so we were finishing spending that by the end of the year. And then it was this year's grant that we were um, applying for. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Thanks for those corrections, Nancy. Okay. Um, are there any other corrections to the minutes? The one that Christy found earlier today, and that was um, the spelling of Lassie's on the Woodbridge uh, sent the center's report. Lassie's caterers is L-A-S-S-E apostrophe S. I guess there's no I. That's probably my fault there. Sorry. Okay. Anything, anything else? Okay, if not, then um, may I have a motion to accept the minutes? So moved. Pat, a second? Second it. 
Janet, okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Uh, <laughs> next on the agenda is the human Annette? Okay. Um, bear with me for one second. I did not have a printer at home, and I'd like to be able to read my report. if I can do, you guys can still see me, correct? Yes. Okay. I can't see all of you on a grid anymore, but um, I can see Ellen, actually. <laughs> you can always see me. That's all I can see right now, but let me see if I can change this. Uh, so I I'm on my phone. I don't know how to even change things on my phone. Like, no, actually, if I, if oh, I, no, I, I don't have it. a working printer, so I'm going to just, I'm just going to, uh, read from my report or at least touch base with it. Um, uh, okay. So I would like to update you on the first on the COVID QDHD. Um, so the town of Woodbridge, I just got a report today. Um, we compare very favorably to other towns in Connecticut, the statewide average for um, delivery of the vaccine is 29.9%. Uh, according to this report sent by the uh, Quinnipiac Valley Health District, but um, compiled by DPH, uh, our town is at 43.1%. So better than the state average. The, the report basically was, was pointing out um, disparities in in how the vaccine is being uh, delivered or people have access to it in in more urban situations so it, in that we're where you know we're where we should be we know we know we have better access than in other places um, excuse me Jeanette when you mm -hmm. said 29.9 percent of what of seniors eligible seniors 75 and plus um, that 29.9% um, of municipalities is the, the average amount, the average percentage per, per municipality is 29.9%. There are some municipalities around the 20% mark, and there was one or two, I think Hebron was up at, at around 60% um, that they had uh, vaccinated or had gotten to vaccine appointments. Not all of these appointments, obviously, are, are happening within um, these communities. People just have access to large scale delivery systems like Yale or in West Hartford or in Shelton, you know, so they're traveling from town to town. These are not necessarily town delivery systems. In fact, probably most of them aren't. Um, so, so is the, the reason that we're not at near 100% Due to lack of availability of the, the vaccine, or I don't think so, Arnie. Um, my, the staff has done an amazing job. Um, we were given the census data, and Kathy Ressler was uh, given some hours to enter that data into our Schedules Plus system. We did outreach through both email and uh, robocall to let people know that we are available to help them. This was, this was even before we had a clinic last Friday, we have been um, relentlessly providing information of, we, we gathered together all, all the locations, all the access points, they were linked. For those who were computer literate, there were phone numbers, um, a multitude of information and we talked residents through finding appointments uh, at various locations for weeks before we had our clinic. Um, we've also um, had access and we have more access now to appointments in North Haven through QVHD. Uh, QVHD is sort of using North Haven as a um, home site and are allotting their four towns um, uh, a proportion of vaccines per town. So 
for example, this Thursday coming, we have um, 40 people that we can get into appointments in North Haven. Um, we've already done uh, one clinic. We had we were given an allotment of 19 spots, another clinic with 12 spots. Not everyone is choosing to go to these clinics. Many of them want to go to uh, Griffin or Yale and or their private doctors have access through different um, groups. So, uh, but we're finding, Christy made a lot of calls on Friday. We had, believe it or not, one extra vaccine um, to go out. Uh, we had, we had been told we'd have 66 appointments. We had six on the waiting list. Uh, we got everybody from the waiting list in and there was one more vaccine and she called the rest of the numbers we had associated with birth dates prior, well, on 1945 and prior. And, uh, and everyone she talked to had either appointments or had gotten their first shot. Uh, our plan now is to get from the Registrar of Voters uh, more updated information, um, sort the list through um, sort the list through birth date and see if we can cross-reference that list with the census data that is a little bit old. You know, obviously we're into a new census, but we don't have access to it uh, as yet. Um, so um, we're using a little bit old data to try and reach everybody in town. Um, newsletter, Facebook pages. Um, neighbor to neighbor, we're trying to get the word out that if people are looking for appointments, um, they should be contacting us as well as all these other information um, sites. Um, I'm hopeful that we'll, we'll find the rest of these, uh, these folks. Um, there were 750 seniors, seven, uh, 75 and older. There's actually a thousand in town, but 250 of them live in, um, assisted livings and we're not responsible for those. Um, I believe um, that data is separate than the data that we've been given. Um, so 750 and uh, what we're finding of those 750 that we've done outreach with um, most seem to say they have appointments. Um, we'll see, uh, um, uh, you know, Pat? How do you, how do you know? So how do they know that 42% have gotten them with all these disparate places that people can go? So how do we know this? Well, I, I got this report from DPH. Um, I know, I'm wondering how they know. How they know everyone who gets a, a vaccine is uh, uploaded into the VAMS system and the VAMS system knows exactly where you're from and what your birth date is, what your zip code is. Um, it may even know you know, what you had for breakfast. I'm not sure, but- no, that's the Chinese know that. We don't know that. <laughs> it knows a lot. I'm not sure I understand that comment. Um, but seriously, um, they, uh, the VAM system, um, even though we're not requiring, when we register people in our, for our um, clinics, we actually have been downloading the paperwork um, delivering it to some seniors who don't have printers, don't have computers, um, or having them, if they do drive, swing by the center, we'll print it and put it in the envelope with the information about their appointments, and they've been picking them up. Um, and then when it goes back to the clinic, there's actually somebody with a title screening, a screener, who uploads it right into VAMS. So even though we're not requiring, VAMS is very difficult for most seniors. Um, and it was difficult for friends of mine who were trying to upload their, their parents. Um, it's, a, it's a tough system. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah, thanks. Okay. So I'm, I'm just a little confused. This all sounds wonderful about how much effort's going in and how we're capturing just about everybody. So I come back to why just 29.9 percent? It, it feels like it should be well, it's, nice it's, average. That's it's 43.1 in Woodbridge. Oh, I'm sorry, 43.1. Okay. Yeah, and and I think that's only because people have appointments and haven't gone to them yet and gotten their vaccine. Okay. I think that okay. once we get through this week and may, potentially next, I have a lot of clients 
who we got appointments at Griffin for the first and second weeks of February. So I think once they get their appointments, um, we'll see a, a big turn. Right. Um, you got to get them moving. We got to get the next group. I'm in the right. next group. Come on. We need the vaccine. Well, yeah, there was a rollout of a lot of cancellations for people that signed up and then got a cancellation, had to reschedule. So I'm sure that delayed things. I think the, um, I think Waterbury Hospital, is that the one with Post University, I think they said they're delayed until the 8th now. And UConn as well. UConn. UConn. Kind of thing I that saw that doing. about UConn, yep. I just um, want to add quickly that um, everybody that we've spoken to, nobody has had any difficulty in obtaining a vaccine that wanted to with the the numbers that we have been able to provide and the, the sources we've been able to provide. We haven't had that difficulty. Correct, Matt? Have you? Right. No, absolutely. Christy's done an amazing job. Ellen, the whole staff, Judy, you know, Nancy, everybody has jumped in when we've We've shared a document with um, all these phone numbers and links. And even for the 65 to 74 year olds, we've been sending that out. And, and there's a ct.gov site on there where they can stay in touch and see when um, the rollout of that phase of 1B comes, comes out. They can see when they can use these sites and they're all you know, sort of itching for it. So. Um, We've, we've certainly expanded our footprint in Woodbridge. People are much more aware of the Human Services Department. Um, I think we're on people's radar. And I, you know, I got a call uh, from a gentleman in Kansas. Um, his 92-year-old brother lived here and unfortunately was not on our radar and now is. And we'll we'll work to get him an appointment next week. Um, but you know, this is this is why we're we're doing all this outreach. Okay. And I'd like to add that North Haven was very good. That's where Frank and I went, and uh, Betsy Agla sent us the forms to fill out ahead of time. By walking in with those forms all filled out, uh, made a big difference too. We were in and out very very fast. Yeah, I've heard really great things. Beth took her mother. To North Haven yeah. and uh, Ellen and Ellen, our staff member Ellen McDonald took her in-laws to North Haven, and like I said, we have two clinics in North Haven this week coming, um, and uh, and we'll be sending more folks. Additionally, Christy's been doing a lot of uh, coordination of uh, transportation. There's you know there's a lot of seniors who are happy to take an appointment in Shelton or North Haven, or or New Haven, but they don't want to drive. So um, Christy's been providing uh, transportation uh, coordination for uh, a lot of seniors to get them to these appointments, uh, which are very helpful. I would have to say that bearing in mind how unbelievably difficult it is to deal with doing it online, I'm going to go so far as to say that there are people in Woodbridge who would never have figured this out were it not for human services and the the work that they're doing because it's just um it's it's not easy to do it really is not easy to do and um so again hats off to human services for that because i think it's an incredibly it doesn't matter who i speak to and, and i have friends in different states because they are you know a little bit older and they are retired and everything and everybody has the same complaint how do you get the vaccination? How do you get the vaccine? Um, what's the what's the uh, process? So um, again, just wanted to underscore that I think that uh, there are that you guys have been dealing with a very vulnerable population that would not have been able, in some cases, would not have been able to to ever figure this out. Yeah, no, absolutely. We we've talked to people who said, "Thank God you called." Um, I just didn't know how to how to make this work. So, um, and and neighbors are actually stepping up and letting us know and telling neighbors to call us, um, especially younger people who are on Facebook or the town website. Um, Betsy Yagla set up uh, a site at the town website, and uh, hundreds and hundreds of folks um, submitted forms. Um, to that and, and that helps us with the outreach as well. Then um, Kathy was able to enter all that data 
from all those forms into Schedules Plus. Our Schedules Plus is, is so much more expanded now than it ever was um, to reach people by email and, and by robocall. So um, we really, we're in a much better position to reach the town, um, especially in light of the state pulled back a little bit on um, the ability to use the reverse 911. It, it, Beth can't send out information about this unless it's a, um, it, it's a, you know, emergency. There, you're only allowed to use the reverse 911 now in situations of emergency. So we're able to send our robocalls out with, with no um, parameters that limit us, which is great. So I don't wanna belabor the meeting. Are there more questions? Um, I do wanna- just Okay. Jeanette, just a fast question. Um, where do you make, do you have to make the appointment at North Haven for the second shot or can you go anywhere? So um, North, uh, Quinnipiac is, is really being very careful, QVHD. Um, they did not give people a return appointment when they went up there. Um, they continue not to do that. Um, and they have good reason not to do that in that each week they have to get their allotment of vaccine and they apply for it and they're told, they apply on a Wednesday, they're told on a Friday whether they actually are going to receive it. And that's when they'll contact the towns to let people know um, that they, um, they have appointments. So it's gonna be a little bit last minute. Um, you can likely get an appointment elsewhere. Um, you, you wanna maintain that window of you know, three and a half weeks to four weeks on your, your Moderna. I believe, but um, we were told that they will apply for the vaccine for that time slot. I believe, I, I really don't want to say, I really don't want to say what the date is um, at the meeting because it, it's, it is privileged for right now until they confirm that they'll have their vaccine. But needless to say, everyone who had an appointment there will be contacted when they get the vaccine and the exact same time of day you went for your first appointment will be your slot that day. So you are slotted in and they will get you uh, your second shot. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I just, I, w I really wanna say, you know, last month at our meeting, I, I talked about how Christy and Betsy Yagla and I were gonna meet with QVHD the following Wednesday and in a month's time, um, you know, we're, we're on the other side of having had our first clinic. And I just want to point out how hard the staff worked um, with the outreach, the calls. As soon as it went out, it, it was like you were on the phone and you're, you know, you got two calls while you were on the phone. And when you hung up and intended to call the next folks back, the phone was already ringing. And that was for six people you know, three of them part-timers, but for six people all day, every day, there was nothing else we could do. So I do want to point out that, that this has been a little overwhelming and has pushed a lot of our other obligations somewhat aside, but of, of course, this is a priority. So um, can I move on to the VITA or are there more questions? Keep up the good work. Oh, thank you, Pat, yeah. for everybody. Great, Christy. Go, Christy. By the way, can I say one thing? I know you've all been watching the news, but Connecticut is one of the only seven states in the United States that has vaccinated 10% of their population. We're one of the only ones. So we're really doing good as a state. I don't know what that means, but I know my friends are all over 75 that I play cards with in my book club and they had no problem at Yale or Griffin getting an appointment, getting their vaccines efficiently in and out 20 minutes. So we're, we're doing a good job as a state, which is pretty cool. Makes me feel really good. All right. Okay, I'm gonna move on to the VITA program. Um, the, um, you know, as with anything um, going on now, VITA is gonna look a little different during a pandemic. Um, so instead of having all the clients make appointments and come in for their taxes, those who are able to access um, a smartphone or uh, a computer are being given a new secure website um, 
to uh, be able to upload their documents. Uh, those who cannot access a smartphone or a tablet or computer um, will will make a call to um, Human Services. They'll speak with Ellen. Ellen will refer them to a telephone intake with one of our VITA volunteers. And then um, VITA um, is gonna be coming Wednesdays from nine to noon. They've set up in the lounge and they have a scanner and a printer. Folks will drive up who have appointments. They'll, um, they'll hand over their documents to one of the, the ladies who are our VITA volunteers who will bring the documents inside, um, upload any information they need, and then return the documents to the person waiting in the car. The only difference this year is it takes about a week to get your return back rather than um, a day, rather than the same day, an hour. So it's, it's about a week because from, from the intake site, it will go to one of the volunteers and then Another volunteer will do the um, the actual filing, and then all the um, materials will come back to to the person who uh, who dropped off their stuff. So I think it's it's different, but it's workable. And they had a test run last week, and it seemed to go very well. Um, Ellen and uh, the ladies were working out the glitches, so we'll hope that. Uh, this Wednesday, everything runs smoothly as it opens. And we'll do that for a couple of months on Wednesdays. Um, and then, uh, are there any questions about VITA? Um, the job posting for the clerical assistant has been a little bit disappointing. Uh, we've only gotten very few um, applications. We're going to expand uh, its footprint, the, the, um, the the application, um, the, the ad uh, went to the CAF um, organization, Connecticut Association of Senior Center Personnel, and it went to the Woodbridge Town News. Um, Town Hall has said they'll put it out on their Facebook so we can look for some local clients, and then we're going to put it on Indeed this week just to see, you know, who's out there who might be looking so we can have a better assortment. Um, have you ever posted anything on Indeed before? Yes. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. And we have a lovely woman named Ellen who does not follow, uh, does not send along all the nonsense. <laughs> so, yeah. so is that what you were asking? Inundated with all of these inappropriate resumes. Completely inappropriate. And Ellen um, only looks and holds on to the people who have some semblance of a reason to have applied. Yes, we we actually did that the last time and uh, we got quite a few good candidates. So, mm -hmm. um, and I just wanted to follow up one last thing about the CARES Act grant. Um, unfortunately, I put my, my report up, but I put it in a font I'm unable to read. So <laughs> I've been sort of winging it here, but I, I would like to just, um, well, that's okay. Um, so we applied, uh, I told you about the CARES Act money. It's $2,500. It was a non-competitive grant put out by, um, well, obviously federal and state money, but it was through the Association of uh, Area Agency. Um, and we, we got our, our grant um, application from uh, South Central um, uh, Area uh, wow. Agency area agency on aging um <clears throat> so just to wrap it up quickly it was due on the 29th we had the um the clinic on the 29th so on the 28th we got it in christy and i did a lot of research on on what the parameters involved what we could include in this grant i think we spent more time on it than we even should have because i submitted around 2.30 and at seven o'clock we were granted $2,500. So the quickest turnaround on a grant proposal ever, um, but we did very well. And this will include things like um, portable hand sanitizer, hardware for the Schedules Plus system so that people can log in from home to sign up for programming. They can, um, it's, a, it's a touch screen when they come in 
to um, to come into programming, but it will keep uh, a count of how many people are in the building. It uh, it will it'll tell us a lot of information we need for um, bringing people back to programming uh, and keeping everybody safe. Um, touchless soap dispensers, all kinds of things are new tables that we can move around to keep the cohort smaller. Um, and it's $2,500. Uh, we need to purchase the items. It's a, it's a reimbursement type grant. We'll purchase the items um, and submit the receipts by March. And so we'll have everything coming in by April and the money back, which is terrific, you know. Um, so that is it for me. Thanks for your report. Jeanette, um, we'll need a motion to accept human services report. I'll make a motion. Okay. Second. Second. Jen. Arnie. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Human services report is accepted. Uh, Nancy, you services? Hi. Uh, yes, I just wanted to uh, let you know that the we did extend the deadline for gratitude baskets, the one I spoke of earlier, where kids will get together on a, you know, a team and then they'll, they'll gather some things, drop them off at one student's house, and then they'll drop them to us. We've received about 10 baskets already, which are really great, and we're hoping for some more. Uh, we also opened a snow art competition. So between today and tomorrow, I think there's enough snow out there that we might be seeing some snowmen and snow ladies and snow animals, who knows? Uh, and so people can submit those photos to youth services and uh, we'll get some prizes together. So the deadline for that is also uh, 26th of February. And we just want to see some families get out together. And the whole idea is to just not just have kids, but the families do something. Take advantage of the snow that's out there. Um, Anti Defamation League programming. I talked to Claire Doyle at the middle school, and uh, he's given me the go ahead to you know start planning uh, with ADL. So we'll get some programming going and some workshops, hopefully, virtual workshops. Um, after school guided study program should be beginning. Uh, we had, you know, we just were a little concerned about how it was going to happen because it's an after school program. And uh, whether the kids are in school or not, you know, Katie McCollum at the uh, at Beecher Road School will will definitely make it happen. And she's actually considering just you know having teachers do one on one virtual assistance with students. And I imagine right now there's quite a need for that. Uh, so we're hoping to get that started soon. And the grant monies have been approved for this year, so that includes the uh, enhancement grant, which will be used for the after school guided study program. And uh, just one other thing, uh, you know, the uh, Bethany Orange Woodbridge Drug and Alcohol Action Council, which is listed as BODAC, is, uh, is our local prevention council. And uh, so the grant was submitted for this current fiscal year. Um, th this year's grant has to be used entirely for uh, vaping prevention and vaping education. And uh, there is actually, um, Shadal, who did our programming here a couple years ago, she is actually doing a program and I sent it to the schools and hopefully it got out to parents and I think it'll be on Facebook too through the PTSO. Uh, this Thursday, the 4th, she's doing a programming about vaping uh, at 5.30 p.m. And uh, if you want to sign up, actually there's a sign up on the Milford Prevention Council uh, website because they shared this information with us. They also shared information on um, a Dr. Alicia Farrell. She's doing some free parenting workshops throughout February. Each week, there's a different topic. And uh, again, you could register through either Alicia Farrell's website or through the Milford Prevention Council website. Uh, this week, there's actually one on the third. It's about the pressure to be perfect and the unintended consequences, I think is a, a big topic, especially for our high school students. So, uh, so I'm hoping that parents will sign on to some of those. I think they're really interesting. Can I ask a question about that, Nancy? Yes. I, I assume that Dr. Farrell is a psychologist or a clinical social worker or yes, something. Yes, she's a psychologist, a PhD. Yes. When we offer parents that that information, mm -hmm. are we making it clear that we're not necessarily 
you will, sponsoring it or giving it our seal of approval. Since this might be wonderful, but it might also be horrible. Um, so Milford Prevention Council, actually, the Milford Prevention Council got, um, they worked through bridges in Milford and they got a huge grant this year and it was to help other local prevention councils because they're doing well with theirs and they are uh, sharing information and helping to build our prevention council as well. So, um, and we have had Trisha Dahl, so I, I'm totally confident, you know, about her. About that. But Alicia Farrell, uh, you know, they have, you know, had programs with her before, so they've shared it. And when I shared it, I said that it was sponsored by, uh, you know, some of the local prevention councils. So when they get on the Milford Prevention Council, there's a list there of, you know, who sponsors theirs. Okay. Thank you for asking. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Any questions? Nancy, thank you very much for that report. Um, okay. Need a motion to accept Nancy's Youth Services Report? So moved. John, okay. Um, and a second was Pat, okay. All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? The motion is carried. Um, Christy, would you please give us the Woodbridge Center Report? Sure. As Jeanette mentioned, the vast majority of our time and effort was spent on the COVID vaccine. I'm not gonna repeat anything that she said, um, but we were able to obtain some phone numbers that mainstreamed um, getting our seniors to be able to access those appointments um, so efficiently that we bypassed even giving information about going through the website frequently or the computer login. Um, people were able to call these numbers to either Griffin or Yale and um, have appointments within, within the week usually. Um, the extensive outreach that we've been doing enables um, the center to be checking on our residents during a time of year that lends itself to depression and isolation. So that was very beneficial. Tomorrow's super masquerade New Year's party with love drive through was rescheduled to Thursday, February 4th, which happens to be National Soup Day. Who knew that was a thing, but it works for us. Jewish Senior Services is providing the food, and Coachman Square uh, donated $300 towards the event. Yale China collaborated with the Eli Whitney Museum, who provides craft kits representing the Chinese New Year. And the next drive through will be in March to represent St. Patrick's Day, and we will have a traditional holiday meal. Uh, Yale plays a new exercise class that is a combination of yoga for balance, Pilates for core strength and um, flexibility, um, stretching to flexibility. And that will begin Tuesday, February 9th. Target strength training and the uh, exercise before they continue to be offered. Getting to the point of health is a new lecture series that will be in on Friday, February 19th with TVHC um, presenting an update on COVID. And an opportunity to ask questions will follow. And um, the next lecture will be offered in March and we will focus on staying fit and prevention falls. And lastly, the center was gifted a beautiful electric keyboard from Stephanie Treleglia, which we uh, will look forward to hearing once we are finally back to there again. Thank you for that excellent report. Are there any questions um, about Woodbridge Center? No questions. I need a motion to accept that report. I'll make a motion. Okay, Viviana. Jen, did you? I think Jen is muted, so that's why I haven't been hearing. Okay. No, I'm not muted. Oh, okay. Well, did you want? I, okay. A second for that motion. Okay. That is fine. Perfect. Sorry. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion carried. Um, we are up to old business, new business. I know we're sort of racing through the agenda, guys, but um, we try to be efficient. Electricity. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> I, there is no old business. Is there any new business? Anybody wants to raise any issue or anything? We can't add to the agenda because we didn't add to it, but anyhow, um, at the beginning of our meeting. Um, Okay, our next meeting is March 1st, 2021. And I will need a motion to adjourn if there is nothing else to come before this August. Five. 
So moved. Okay. Okay, second to Jen. Okay, this may be a record time meeting, guys. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. And we covered a lot of territory. And um, again, thank you for coming, everybody. On such